Hey Robot Makers, hope you're having a good day so far. So do you want to learn about the Cubot Pro, which is the latest robot from Electfreaks? Then this is the show for you. So let's dive straight in. My name is Kevin. Come with me as we build robots, bring them to life with code and have a whole load of fun along the way. Okay, let's get over to Keynote and make a start on this. This is such a fun thing I want to show you today. So yes, we're going to be looking at having a review of the CuteBot Pro, understanding what makes it Pro. Uh, we're going to have a look at some of the features, what it can do. We're going to program the uh, CuteBot Pro today live on stream using uh, Microsoft Make Code, which is really easy to use, which has both Python and a block code um, interface, which is pretty cool, and you can switch between the two. Uh, we're going to have a look at what's in the box, the price, uh, and then obviously we're going to have a bit of a demo of CuteBot Pro in action and do some comparisons between it and CuteBot. Uh, I've got some other micro bit robots on the uh, the desk as well next to me, so we can have a look at those too. And if you're here for the live stream, then we'll have a bit of a Q and A and hangout after the main show. So let's get to it, shall we? Okay, so what is CuteBot Pro? So this is a small robot produced by Electfreaks uh, and it's designed for education. So this is one of the really great things about uh, this particular robot and it runs on the micro bit. So we're going to have a look at what the, uh, the micro bit is uh, in a couple of minutes time. And if they also, uh, Electfreaks also make these micro bit compatible boards that are called PicoEd. So I've got one here from the, uh, the original CuteBot and this is kind of a plug-in replacement, but obviously it's got a lot more features on it than the original micro bit. So this one can just plop into the uh, the CuteBot. This is the original CuteBot and we'll have a look at the CuteBot Pro. We'll unbox it in a, mo in a minute. So the CuteBot Pro is um, also two-wheel drive, uh, but un unlike the CuteBot, uh, it has a, a, some extra features that make the, the motors so much more funky. Uh, it comes fully assembled. The only thing you need to plug in there is a battery and the uh, the ultrasonic rangefinder, which means it's really, really easy to put together. And it's powered by an 18650, 18650 battery. I've got one of these here. And these are the kind of batteries that you'll typically find in like, say, um, an e-cigarette, or if you have an electric car, it's probably got loads of these inside. So 18650 there. The, the reason it's called an 18650 as well, just in case you're curious, is because of the dimension. So it's 18.5 um, millimeters tall uh, by, um, so 18 millimeters tall by 6.5 millimeters wide. If I had my uh, calipers to hand, I could show you that, but I digress. So it's down to the dimensions of it. So what is the micro bit? You might not have heard of the micro bit if you're outside of the UK. Hopefully you have though. Uh, so the micro bit is actually made in the UK. It was originally uh, part of the BBC's um, program to educate people and increase IT literacy. So uh, this is a 3.3 volt microcontroller, has 256K of flash and 16K of RAM. And it has 25 LEDs on the front. These are um, single kind of color LED, just white LEDs, but they can also be used as light sensors, which is pretty cool. I didn't realize you could do this until I actually got my hands on a micro bit. It has two buttons, which are kindly labeled A and B on the front, and it also has a motion uh, sensor inside, so it can do accelerometer and even digital compass as well. It has two types of radio on board. It's got an RF radio for very short range messages and uh, you can very simply send messages between one micro bit and another one. And it also has Bluetooth on board as well. So we can actually communicate this from our browser without having to install any software uh, at all. Uh, it has the thermometer built in. It has an, the audio. It has a microphone and a speaker. Uh, it has 19 GPIO pins and it costs about £13.50 in the UK. Yeah, plus shipping, I guess. And it's been designed to be crocodile clip friendly. This is what I call them, crocodile clips. I'm sure they have other names in uh, other countries as well. But the idea here is that you have these um, uh, these great big um, areas where you can connect a clip to. I'll just show you that on the uh, screen so you can see you've got uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 and ground. And the idea there is you can, you can get extra boards like this one here from uh, Monk Makes. This one's like a pass through board where you can connect other things like uh, I squared C. Um, and you simply just plop the uh, micro bit in the top there, but they still have these connectors on the bottom there. And in fact, I have this little uh, uh, Microsoft um, Arcade um, Games console, I think you call it, from Kittenbot. 
and this one also has the micro bit edge connectors on it as well so they're pretty cool and what's what's clever about this is there's kind of two stages to these um, edge connectors there is the the nice crocodile clippable ones which have got these great big um, edge connectors for you but then in between those as these really small little edge connectors and that means if you plug it into something like one of these robot controllers here from this one's from kittronics uh, this this one means that you can plug in things like motors uh, and control them from the micro bit so the micro bit simply just plops in the front like so and then using the edge connector it can connect to all those individual pins and there's uh, like i said 24 of them i think was on the other slide we also have two user friendly buttons we have a and b on the other side as well we have a reset button and there is also a power connector there a jstsh connector um jstph connector i should say uh, for power so common kinds of power battery packs can uh, can work with that too and it's been designed to be very powerful but not particularly power hungry so you can power it from two aa batteries or three uh, aaa batteries uh, and that'll keep you going for quite a while so like i said 24 pinouts these are all the uh, the individual pinouts if you wanted to take a record of what they are but we've got uh, three 3.3 volts we've got three grounds we have an spi and an i squared c bus which means we can connect other things to this we have the a and b buttons we've got six analog inputs 19 digital inputs or outputs and we have the leds as well so plenty of power and features for such a tiny little board and quite a cheap board so yes it does quite a lot of things and this was originally launched the version one was launched i think i've got a version one next to me somewhere uh, yes so uh, that's the version two maybe I'll, I'll put that into something there we go it's into the uh smiles robot there so the version one which you can tell if you look on the back it doesn't have a chip in the middle whereas if i compare that to the later version two which is next to it you can see this sort of a big chip in the middle um, so the version 2 has got like more sound processing capabilities it can do speech synthesis as well but the original one was launched in October 2015 and every year st uh, seven student in the UK was given a micro bit or at least given access to one it depends on what the school decided to do with those and if you go to microbit.org you can actually um, access all the resources there all the learning materials and so on got tutorials uh, videos and guides and so on and the other, the other thing that's really annoying to me is that when you buy these there's a little color on the corner there and you can't actually decide what color they just ship a random color out to you and i want to collect all of these so i've got quite a few of them but not not all of them <laughs> so that's quite annoying i've not got the dark blue but i've got the uh, the green colored one as well i'm sure you're interested in that so comparison wise if we compare this to a couple of other common microcontrollers you can see kind of how this sits so we can look at the arduino for example the arduino uno uh, version 3 the r3 version that had 2k of ram whereas the micro bit's got 128 we compare that to the 256 of the pico w uh, we can see it's not quite got as much there it's got half as much as the pico uh, memory wise the pico has like two megs of onboard flash the Arduino had 32k whereas this has a uh, half a meg which is at 512k uh, speed wise the Arduino 16 megahertz the micro bit is also 16 megahertz um, the version 2 though is a lot faster that's 64 megahertz so it's four times faster uh, compared to the 133 of the uh, Pico W and you can see that the number of pins is the same as the original one as well the 19 pins uh, digital io pins versus the uh, the 14 that we have on the arduino and the 26 that we have on the pico w uh, other features as well that stand out so the the version 2 of the micro bit has bluetooth has a speaker a microphone a temperature sensor and an accelerometer built in compare that to the arduino which has none of those things and the pico w has bluetooth has a temperature sensor but doesn't have a, an accelerometer speaker or microphone on there so it's quite a lot going on uh, in the micro bit which makes them such a fun board you should definitely have one in your collection so what kind of things does the micro bit do so it can display images there's a whole load of icons and things that you can display on that five by five grid the um, 25 pixel display there you can scroll text on it which is really useful for sort of debugging things or just make a little badge for people to wear it can detect light we just flip the uh, the usage of these leds so instead of making light they can actually tell you how much light they are uh, is landed on them they're not the best light sensor but they do tell you if it's light or dark which is more than enough there's a temperature sensor on board there is an accelerometer on board 
which also has a digital compass, so it knows which way uh, Magnetic North is. It has Bluetooth, has this RF radio, has a microphone and a speaker, which means it can play music as well. It has a very rudimentary sort of beeps and uh, you can play back music, but it can also do speech, which blew me away. Uh, the speech is pretty crude, and I understand it's based on the SAM uh, speech library from the Commodore 64 days, so it's got a bit of heritage there too. And uh, like I said, there is two versions of the microbits currently in circulation. So the, the original version one, which launched in March 2015, and then in 2020, in October, version two was launched. So it's uh, about three years old now. And uh, we've gone over some of those differences there. The other thing it has as well is this little capacitive touch, uh, which is the actual logo in the middle there at the top. It's like a circle with two dots and it looks like a little face. That's actually a capacitive touch button as well. So if you touch that, you can use that as like an extra third button. It's a pretty clever stuff. So back to the Electrics uh, CuteBot Pro. I just wanted to go over the features of the micro bit so you can understand how this uh, CuteBot can really make uh, the most of those features. So here are some of the headline features of the CuteBot Pro. It has a four-way line sensor. So the original one had a two-way line sensor, which means it could detect if it was going on a line, if it was going left or right, and could uh, you know steer itself accordingly. So a four-way line sensor means that it can be really ac accurate at positioning and following lines. Um, it has encoders for motor control as well. So each of the motors as well as being able to be turned on or off, it can actually count how many revolutions each of the motors makes, which means we can measure the distance that the wheels have traveled very accurately. And that means we can do things like turning on the spot uh, and understanding exactly where we are because of uh, how many counts that the, the wheels have done. It has two RGB LEDs underneath as well, a bit like the, um, the trailer bot from Pimroni, which has got six underneath, but this has two um, RGB LEDs so it can make rainbows underneath, which is pretty cool. Has the ultrasonic rangefinder like the original uh, CuteBot has, but it also has some additional expansion ports on it as well. We'll have a look at some of those in closer detail in a minute. And also, more importantly, instead of like having three AA batteries, like uh, AAA batteries, like the original CuteBot, which I've got here, uh, this one is actually powered by an 18650 battery, so it's got a bit more juice to it for extended play. It's obviously rechargeable as well. And one of the things they don't mention on the thing is it's rechargeable by just plugging a USB micro B cable into the CuteBot Pro, and you can charge the battery up without having to take the battery out, which is pretty cool. So how do we code this? We can use a Microsoft Make Code to control and code the CuteBot Pro. And the really great thing about Microsoft Make Code, as well as it being written by Microsoft and having that kind of quality and uh, uh, maturity behind it, is it also has a microbit simulator built in. So straight from a browser, without having to install any software, any IDE, you can simulate your programs on a virtual microbit uh, before you actually run it on your robot for real, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can also pair it with the, uh, you can pair the Microbits and the CuteBot Pro over Bluetooth using the Microbits Bluetooth functionality, which the original one had as well, to your browser without having to install any extra software. So that's also pretty cool, particularly if you work in education, you don't want to be installing loads of extra software on each uh, desktop. So that makes it really easy to use for education. Uh, one of the other things as well that I think is particularly cool is um, it has a bit of range of uh, development. So if you start out by doing code blocks, like on the right hand side of the screen here, which is drag and dropping uh, code blocks from a, a toolbox of available um, uh, code blocks, you can also switch just by dragging the button on the top from blocks to Python, and you can see what the equivalent Python code is. Um, so you can switch between them depending on what your, um, your maturity of programming is. So it's also quite a cool way of teaching Python because you can get familiar with the blocks, drag and drop, and then you can see Python code generated from that too, which is pretty good. So what makes it pro? That's one of the questions that people probably will be thinking. So the first one is these motors now have the encoders on them, which means the movement and positioning is very accurate. So this is now in the leagues of like the trailer bot from Pimroni, for example. It's got the very accurate positioning of the motors. Uh, we've got the additional expansion headers. So the original CuteBot um, has a very small number of expansion headers on the back there. So you can see we've got, uh, I think it's three servo headers uh, if I can get that into focus, just where my fingers are there. There is three uh, servo headers and three GPIO headers. I think they're servo headers. No, it's two servo headers and um, two lots of GPIO on the, the back there. And that's pretty much it. 
I think there is an option to have uh, an infrared control on this uh, and then underneath you've simply just got the uh, original um, RGB LEDs and the, the, the two-way line sensor on the original Qbot. So we've now got a four-way line sensor, so it's a lot more accurate. But there's also a really cool feature where you can calibrate just from the robot without having to do any code. You can calibrate those line sensors just by pressing a button uh, and then moving it backwards and forwards over where the black and white lines are. And it will figure it out from there. And you'll see a little gauge on the front that it's understood where the line is. So it's very, very easy to calibrate that uh, depending on the lighting conditions and the kind of paper that you're using or whatever material you're using to, to draw the line out there. The 18650 also means that you have um, more power for the robot, so it's going to last longer between recharges, which again, if you've got one of these on the go all day uh, for a classroom, it's going to be really handy having that extra power there. Uh, and the expansion headers, like I said, there's, there's um, a lot more expansion headers on the... Uh, the Cutebot Pro. So we'll, we'll have a look at those in detail, but specifically there is a um, a motor socket, so you can plug in a, a, a little JST connector and you've got an extra motor controller there. You've got the R uh, I2C connectors, you've got an infrared um, sensor, there is um, the additional GPIO expansion headers, and um, I think there is another set as well for the for the GPIO, so it's got a lot more than the original Cutebot. Cute also has an on-off button, which is essential, I think, so the battery doesn't run flat. And uh, I particularly like the two underlit RGB LEDs as well. Also has a, button, a buzzer on it. So the, the micro bit has a buzzer on the back, but it's pretty quiet. If I have one of those, it's got the, uh, the little buzzer on the back. It's got a very small buzzer, not particularly loud. The Cutebot Pro has got a much louder buzzer, so you can uh, make, it, make it heard well, uh, further away. So there you go. And they're actually uh, quite different in size, but I'll get them on the, the table in a minute and you can do a bit of a comparison. You can see just how much bigger the Cutebot Pro is to the Cutebot. It's not massively bigger, but um, it is bigger. Uh, and that extra room is mostly to house the battery. But the wheels are certainly larger and you've got uh, more real estate on there. So if you like what I do and you want to me to help the grow the channel, which I'm hopefully you, you would do, please give this video a like. Uh, drop me a comment. Let me know if you've... Uh, You've bought any um, Electrix products before. I'd be interested to know which ones you've got. I've got a growing collection of uh, Electrix stuff now. Uh, and also, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, which I think over 70% of people haven't subscribed, and if you all did, I'd get to that magic million really, really quickly. So uh, don't be one of those people. Be one of the people who actually click subscribe and help me grow the channel. It means a lot to me. Okay, and I do go live every single Sunday at 7 o'clock. Come rain or shine, I'll be delivering a show for you. And I've got a midweek video I can't wait to share with you, which is about Timu robots, or a whole bunch of robots that I've uh, bought from Timu. And uh, I've had a lot of fun putting a video together at reviewing those. So I can't wait to share that. It should be Wednesday, I think, midweek for that to land. Okay, so what's in the box? So first of all, you get a line following map, you get the ultrasonic rangefinder, you get a USB cable to uh, program it, and you also get the Cutebot Pro as well. Uh, we'll do an unboxing in a second. You can have a look at this sort of uh, in real time as I uh, take everything out. Price-wise, it's $49.90. Uh, and um, if you want to get a link to this, um, I'll put a link in the description uh, with a coupon code KM15 that you can type in. So let's have a... Uh, an unbox of this and then have a play with some code, shall we? Right, so let me get over to the, uh, I'm gonna say the captain's table. Well, I'm not doing a Pimeroni video here. Right, so uh, I've got quite a lot of stuff on the table. I'm just gonna move out the way. So that's the uh, the retro arcade also from uh, Electric, which is pretty cool. Uh, we put a little game on here, the same game that I wrote for the uh, the kitten bot there, which is uh, actually our little chihuahua there. Anyway, I'm sure you don't wanna see that that's uh, powered by a micro bit. We've got a whole bunch of other micro bit controllers here and I programmed the red one so that one's got some code on it ready to go. This is a Smiles robot as well which is also micro bit ready. You can simply just plug in a um, micro bit into the Smiles robot and this is a, a Kittronics um, motor board for the uh, for the micro bit. So that means we can make a walking robot as well with a micro bit which is pretty cool. We did a video on that quite a while, a while ago. Uh, this is another robot for our microbit, which is the um, it's a Kittronics one as well. I think it's called the Move, Move M1 or V1, uh, and this one uh, is quite an early robot. I think they probably built a, another one since uh, this one. This was literally version 1.0, but yeah, pretty cool robot. There's the original Cutebot, so we can have that uh, 
just on hand to do a bit of a comparison. I've also got this uh, Adafruit um, micro bit cricket, which you put the micro bit in the top there, like so, and you've got access to all these extra breakouts and terminals, which makes this a lot uh, easier to to program robots and stuff. But it's pretty pretty big. I thought that was quite a chunky uh, thing. Another Kitronics one here. Uh, this one is uh, another robot. What do they call this one? A motor driver board. Again, you just plop micro bit in there and you've got access to all those different uh, edge connectors. And we had the uh, the Pimroni pin between one as well. Again, we can plug this in. A bit stiff there. And uh, get access to all the, the breakouts there. And this nice header so we can get at all those things there. So that's the pin between from Pimroni. Right, okay, so let's unbox this. So it's a really nice quality box to begin with. I do like a good bit of packaging and very simple inside. We've got the user guide, really nicely put together user guide. I mean, there's not a lot you need to uh, to do on here, but they do tell you how to pair it with make code. And they've got some example programs as well with the block code there and an explanation of how it works and what it does. So really nice uh, user guide there. We have this line following uh, map so it's pretty large actually there we go Let's see just how large this is it's absolutely gigantic so it's kind of like um what would that be a a2 i think sheet it's pretty big and here we go so we've got the uh the bot pro here you can see just how large this is. We have the ultrasonic rangefinder. What we have to do here is just plug this in just by pushing it there like so, and then it's ready to go. I don't need the USB cable. There is one provided here. It's a USB, is that USB A to micro B connector? But I've got another cable just uh, ready to go plugged into the laptop so we can do some coding if we need um, to use the cable. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my 18650 battery and I'm going to plug this in. So let me just uh, make sure the negative and the positive are the right way around. There we go. And then we've got the on off switch just like so. And we can see there the power of the, uh, the battery. If I just turn the overhead off for a second, you can see there that there's a, uh, an indicator when you plug, when you turn on, it indicates how much power is left. So it's got four bars and there's three bars showing so we've got enough power there there's also the uh if i put that back on there we can see we have the the wires there for the motors with encoders we've got the uh um, little wheel there at the front we have this training button so this training button just here is when we want to train it on the map we simply just put it over there we press the button and then using these little indicators at the front we can roll it over the top and then roll it back and it will tell us once it's detected, it'll go green and the lights come on. So it's now indicating um, that it's happy. You can see when, uh, when I press that training button, let me just do that one more time so you can see. So there's a little blue button here as it's scanning. It's now over the top of the black, then over the white, then over the black. You just do that a couple of times so that it, it can detect it. And then the green headlights come on to indicate that it's, uh, it's detected and calibrated itself for that particular board. So we can now do line following there. Right, so let me just switch this off and let's plug in the micro bit. The right way around. So the LEDs face forwards, like so. And then if I switch this on, there we go. That little noise means that it's uh, it's ready to go. I've actually loaded a program on this already. If I press the A button, it should go about five centimeters forward and do 90 degree turn. Right, it's on quite a slippy table, so it's not very accurately positioning itself i mean if it was very accurate it would know uh, to come back to that exact position there if i just do that again it's ever so slightly out but it's using sort of dead reckoning for that we can see how accurately it does stop so let's uh, get the cable plugged in and start programming this so if i uh, plug this in here and i'm going to go over to here let me just grab this and let's go to um, let's go to Microsoft Make Code. So here's what I prepared earlier. Let me just grab these down here so you can see the tabs. So if I go to 
um, Elect Freaks product page for this. We can uh, we can see there's the uh, the product itself. Now they do also have um, some a wiki with all the information on about the uh, they call it the Microbit Smart Car, the CuteBot Pro. And we can see on here, there's all kinds of what they call case libraries. These are essentially just like lesson plans. So if we want to do like drive forward, uh, then they have uh, the, the example code and they give you an outline of uh, what goes on there. Now I can actually just click on this, click on edit code. Let's click on the edit button there again. And we're now in Microsoft make code for real. And there's our little simulator over in the left hand side. In fact, if I go full screen on this, you might be able to see this a little bit easier. Let's just load this up here. So it simply says there, set left wheel speed 100% and the right wheel 100%. So it's basically just going to make it roll forward forever. Uh, so that's the first one. We can then also have a look at what the Python code looks like for this. So it simply just says PWM cruise control 100, 100. So that's like left and right. We can go back to the blocks uh, and we can see that the uh, simulator is just getting ready to go there. So all we need to do to get this uh, extra CuteBot Pro plugin, we go to extensions. We search on here for CuteBot Pro and you'll see there that there's the uh, Electrics CuteBot Pro uh, expansion library. So you simply just click on that and then it will load it in um, to make code. Once we click on that, we've then got access to all these uh, individual things we can for example turn off uh, turn on or off the headlights so we can uh, set them let's uh, drag this out so let's get rid of the uh, that um, moving the wheels one for example and then let's just make um, the headlights set we can set both of them to be red so to to pair this if we click on these dots here uh, because I plugged in the cable it's already connected but we can simply just click on these triple dots here to start the, the connecting so let's just download the code this is going to download it into our micro bit and if we now go back over here let me just move this down here and if I turn off the overhead lights you'll see that they're now glowing red now these are the headlights these are the ones that sit um, on top and it also has some LEDs underneath so we can also set those underneath LEDs. Let's go back to our cute bot and see what we've got on here. Um, so we should have some LED, um, do they call them LED strips? So I think actually we go to, let me find it, um, NeoPixels, there it is, sorry. So NeoPixels, set the strip to, and then we can put that in there. And they're on pin 15, I believe. And we can, we can see it has two RGB LEDs in that particular format. And then if we go back to NeoPixels, we can then set the strip to be a particular color. So let's uh, put that underneath there. Don't want that one, let's get rid of that. And then let's set these to be, I don't know, green. Let's try that out. Right. So if I now download this code, Let's see what happens on the, uh, there we go. So we've now got these green, that looks so cool, doesn't it? Green underneath RGB LEDs. Uh, and we can alternate between these two. So one of the uh, uh, the programs that they have on here, let me just click on the rainbow lights. Let's see what they have here. Um, so they're gonna change the colors um, and it will also make the robot move forwards. So let's try that. So we can we can simply go edit code. I like to edit it in the full browser. Let's go back over to here for a second. And we can see there there's a there's two blocks of code. We have on start and there is forever. So on start is a bit like if you used an Arduino, you've got that setup loop. Uh, and then you've got like the main loop which runs forever in python we don't have that kind of on start we just have whatever runs first so if we go back over to python and have a look at the code we've just got um, a function there that's called on button press and then we've got that's essentially the setup on start and then on forever is just a, another function there and it basically just runs that on forever after it's done its setup stuff so if we go back to our blocks, we can see there. So what it's going to do, it's going to display the icon love heart. We can choose from all these predefined ones if we want to. There's like a little giraffe there or a little Pac-Man. Let's choose that one there, a little ghost from Pac-Man. Um, and we can we can even draw our own. That's one of the cool things about um, 
we could basically just drag in this show RGB LEDs and we can draw whatever we want on there. So we could do like our own little face. So that's uh, pretty cool. Just get rid of that. Put that back in there. Okay, and then we also wanted that uh, on button press just somewhere there. Right, so if I download this code now, let's see what happens now. So it's downloading the code. Let's go back over to over here. And it's decided to just shoot off the desk as fast as it can. But if we just look this underneath, we can see that the RGB LEDs are cycling around there. Now it says if I press a button A, and it's really trying to sort of run off the desk. If I press button A, which is just here, it's gonna stop. So it's now stopped. And we can also see on the, the front there, we have that little Pac-Man ghost as the icon on there. So make code is so cool. I don't know if you've, you've used this before, but it's absolutely great for getting people into programming in a very sort of simple way. You simply just drag things from this little toolbar um, out onto this canvas area. Uh, and you can get up to speed very, very quickly. So the Cutebot Pro is like an extension that enables us to get all those extra things on there. So we can we can make our robot move around. So let's have a look at another example on here. If I go back over to here and walk the grid. Now this is quite an interesting one. So what walk the grid is going to do is it's going to go a certain distance forward, turn left, go another couple of steps forwards, uh, and we can essentially get it to, to walk across uh, an imaginary grid very accurately. Let's just grab hold of that because it's shot forward again. So let me just uh, turn that. Let me just hold on to it for a second while it does that right. So you can see here it says um, set the length of blocks to be 30 centimeters. I'm going to set them to be five centimeters to be fair. And then forever set the cat to go forward two blocks and then turn right um, at a place at 90 degrees. Move the cat forward another two blocks. Interestingly they've got the word blocks as a typo there. The feedback to it. Elect Freaks about that. They've got a bit of a typo in their, their code library. Anyway, it still works fine. Uh, what they haven't got on here is, is a stop function. It's basically just going to do this forever. Uh, so let me download this code and let's see what happens. So if I go back over here, so it's going to move to a certain position. It's going to turn. It's going to go to another position. it's going to keep doing that forever. You can see the 90 degrees are pretty accurate now. Let's actually just grab hold of that. Okay, and let's have a look at another of one of the examples on here. Now there is one which is a voice control, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, it says voice control. It's more of a sound level than voice control. So let's get this. So it says on here, understand the principles <clears throat> and methods of trolley motor control. I'll learn to control the trolley's forward and backward stop. Learn how noise sensors work, their applications, and how sound travels through the air. Uh, and learn how to control the speed and direction of the car according to the noise levels. So let's uh, have a look at this one, shall we? It looks like a very, very simple block of code. Let's get this one into here and then let's download the code so because i've got quite a few windows open this sometimes happens where it gets confused to as to which window has um connections if i just click this and do download it's now on on the right window because I've, I've only got one window open right so what it's waiting for now is on a loud sound set the car to advance 30 centimeters so i'm going to do that to be five just because i've got a smaller desk and it also says set the uh, the icon to be a heart. So it's definitely got the heart thing going on. Uh, and what we probably should have on here as well is like a stop. But what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to get this to uh, to reset to, to download again. Sorry. Right. Now, interestingly, the wheels are spinning and spinning. So I don't understand why that would be given that there's no code other than if there's a loud sound. And the studio is pretty quiet when I'm not speaking, so I'd expect that to be uh, um, not to be moving forward. If I just let that go down there. There we go. So if I speak quietly, <laughs> you'll be able to see uh, if I click my fingers in front of it, it'll move forward. <laughs> or maybe not. There we go. It has to be a certain sharp sound, I think.
yeah, that works pretty well. So I'm quite pleased with that. Cool. So um, we can also see on the, uh, let me just make this a bit larger. On the simulator here, it's got the sound level. So it can actually see when I do the, the sort of clap. Uh, if we're running the simulator, we can actually see that there's been a loud sound. So we can click on that to, to make it pretend that there's been a, a loud sound. And we can also adjust what that level would be. That's pretty cool. Okay, so that's everything I wanted to show you sort of demo code wise on here. I'm gonna switch it off now. And we'll go back to the overhead and we'll put the overhead light back on there as well. So one of the cool things is we, we can be programming the uh, micro bit just by plugging the cable into the top there, into the actual micro bit itself. But on the back of the, uh, the SmartBot Pro, there's also another connector so we can actually charge up and there's the little charge indicator. We can actually charge up the uh, the CubeBot Pro, uh, and we'll get a charge indicator of how much that battery is being charged, which is pretty cool. So let's get this side by side with the original CubeBot, and you can see there the original CubeBot is quite a lot smaller than the CubeBot Pro, so you're getting a lot more robot for your money there. Uh, you can see some of the similar features, like they both got these uh, these headlights, albeit these are a bit closer together than these. This one does have um, some RGB LEDs underneath, uh, but the actual expansions, it's got only two, um, if I hold this up a bit closer there, it only has, can I get this to focus in? Come on, focus. There we go. It only has two servo headers and uh, two GPIO headers there, whereas the CubeBot Pro has got quite a lot more there. So you can see there's actually a row of four servo headers uh, and also um, a whole bunch of GPIO headers as well. So it's uh, much more well equipped. We've also got uh, a breakout header here for, I think this is I squared C, and there's also a motor breakout connector there as well. And then on the other side, we have um, the button for training it as well to, to the, do the line following, which we looked at a minute ago as well. Cool, so let me go back over to our keynote. So that was the, uh, the cute bot in action. So if you want to buy one of these, I've actually got a coupon code from Electfreaks. So they have sent me this device uh, to look at today, this robot to look at. Uh, so I have made that clear in the YouTube video. So it is sponsored by them. Uh, so if you want to order yourself a CubeBot Pro, I've actually put a link in the description rather than you having to type out what you can see on the screen there. But if you just uh, expand the description, it'll be there. So you can uh, cut and paste that and go to the shop. And if you put the code uh, KM15 as well, I'll get a tiny bit of commission and it is ridiculously small, but every little helps. Uh, and it can also just give you a bit of a discount there as well. So um, if you want to consider getting one of those, uh, I'd appreciate it. And I think they'll be live uh, next week. So it's it's not even live on their shop yet, but it will be very, very shortly. Cool. That's the first uh, one of those I've had, actually. So if you want to learn more about robotics, um, I've got a whole bunch of courses that are available completely for free without any kind of sign up available at kevsrobots.com slash learn forward slash. So there's all, all kinds of courses there on uh, robotics, on Python, MicroPython, um, 3D printing, Fusion 360, electronics and more. And I also have merch. You can see I've got the uh, the robot maker hat on there. There's uh, other hats available too. Uh, and we've also got the, the mugs and the notebooks. I am gonna be working on my uh, my robotics book tomorrow. Uh, so hopefully I'll have that ready for available in the store too very, very soon. Just grab this off here. So this is the uh, robotics maker's almanac and it's full of all kinds of uh, useful information such as like pinouts for um, the micro bit, for example. So those micro bit pinouts you saw on the slide earlier, there's a page with all those on there. Uh, we've also got uh, things like uh, all the uh, resistor pin values. We've got things like the uh, the pinouts for the Raspberry Pi Pico. We've also got, uh, and the uh, zero. We've also got the dim dimensions of the zero as well. So you can uh, grab those while you're making a robot and you can just have this to hand and flick through. You can also make your own notes in it as well. We've got things like electronic symbols too. So I'll be working on that tomorrow. So we'll have that ready to, to, to buy soon too. But check out the merch. And if you're not on our Discord server, you're also missing out. So you want to head over to kevsrobots.com slash Discord uh, and you can sign up there for free and get access to our online community. Okay, what else have we got on here? 
if you want to follow me on social media then i'm all over social media so on uh, threads i'm at kevin mackley at threads.net uh, i do post everything on there um that i post at the other networks as well just in case uh, you've decided to jump ship from what was twitter now x uh, i'm also on twitter still i'm at kev's mac or x as it's now called um, I'm on uh, Twi um, TikTok at Kev McAleer6. I'm on Instagram at Kev McAleer. And I'm also on Mastodon uh, at Kev's Mac uh, at Mastodon.social as well. Cool. So we'll have a look at some of the comments in a second. Um, and if you want to, um, to join me and your support really matters to me and you can get your name in the end credits, uh, you can do this simply by doing a super thanks or clicking the um, YouTube join button. I think it's the price of a coffee per month. Uh, to do that and that uh, helps support the channel and helps me buy robots and stuff uh, for future videos so i'll give out a shout out to some of our supporters now uh, oops up and there let me just go back to that that's the right button <laughs> so yes we have uh, someone bought me a coffee who wanted to remain nameless we've got adam Sargent, um haunted howarth i walked past him yesterday but i'm not sure he, he clocked who i was on uh, Saturday, uh, Friday I think that was uh, we've got Dean Corti, we've got Marlene Brent we've got John Rank, we've got Tom, we've got Shemi and Steve Phillips, we have uh, Tinkering Rocks, Hybrid Robotics, Cassiopeia uh, Hi Cassie, we've got uh, JDM, we've got Johnny Bates, we've got Bill Hoy Oxrad39, Josie we've got uh, Javi, we have Hans from Cheerlights, Michael and of course Tom as well, so thank you to all those generous people who've helped support the show I uh, really do appreciate that uh, and I think that's everything, yes, according to my notes, that's everything um, for today's show. So this is the point in the video, I'll say thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time.